Hey there, strangers from around the world. I'm Serhi. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm wearing a blazer today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Today, I'm gonna give you my top tips for being a lazy vegan. Because even on days when it seems like I have the most time I've ever had in my entire life, <coughs> global pandemic, it seems that I'm still cooking home less and less and have become the laziest I've ever become in my entire life. But the key to being lazy is being efficient. So I hope that these tips help you achieve this in your everyday life. And you should listen to me because well, because I'm wearing a blazer. I'll also be showing you one of my all-time favorite recipes, which is crock pot sweet potato chili. It may seem like every video I share with you, I say it is my all-time favorite. My all-time favorite. My favorite food of all time. But I promise you, this is my all-time favorite. My number one worst pet peeve is when people are like, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It's so annoying, but I'm gonna do it anyways, because I succumb to peer pressure easily. If you're interested, I've created a playlist with all of my previous vegan-related videos. So go check that out if you, uh, I don't know, if you want to. I mean, like, you don't have to. Uh, whatever. Go watch those videos. Okay, let's do it. The first thing I do before I go to the grocery store is plan out my weekly meals. Okay, well, actually, the first thing I do is put on pants for the first time all week, and then I sit down and plan out my weekly meals. If I don't, I will 100% end up roaming the aisles of Whole Foods, buying unnecessary things that I don't need, like $30 seaweed from the depths of the Mediterranean, or buying a bunch of ingredients that will eventually go bad because I have no idea what I'm gonna do with them, and still end up ordering takeout. Planning out your weekly recipes is really the best way to combat this, I found. You won't be spinning your wheels to think about what to make, because you've already figured that out. I have a personal secret formula that I use to plan out my weekly meals. How can we make more Krabby Patties without the secret formula? Which I'm going to bless you with because hey, we're friends now. Otis, stop tap dancing, cut it out. Separate your shopping list into three categories. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, and snacks. Before you even think about what to get at the grocery store, write down one meal for breakfast, three for lunch and dinner that you already know how to make, and one brand new recipe that you're interested in trying. And under the snack category, you can just write down a couple of healthy snacks that you feel you like to enjoy eating on a weekly basis. This tip also combines with my second suggestion, which is to identify your go-to meals. A very important factor of being efficient and lazy in the kitchen is cooking meals that you already know how to make instead of spending time learning a new recipe because reading is hard sometimes and that's okay. And no, I don't mean microwave pizza, I mean real food. If you know what meals you typically enjoy eating and making, you'll have a much less cooking intensive week. For me, some of my favorite go-to recipes are stir fry vegetables with either quinoa or rice noodles or a salad that I throw together with some nuts, some rice, maybe some baked tofu. I eat these meals every single week, not because I enjoy eating them all the time, but because I've made them so many times that it's second nature to me and it only takes me about five to 10 minutes to cook them up. After you've written down your meals for the week, along with a new recipe that you're interested in trying, I like to go through some of my favorite cookbooks and figure out which ones I've been eyeing that I just haven't gotten time to try. Start writing down all of the ingredients that you're gonna need for each of those recipes. After you've gotten back from the grocery store, my third piece of advice is prep your ingredients as soon as you can. Don't just put your things away and go sit on TikTok for three hours. Go prep your ingredients right now. You'll only get less and less motivated as the week goes on because you're a lazy piece of shit. So the best thing to do is just get it over with right Right now. Again, referencing your recipes for what kind of prep work is needed. Cut up all of your vegetables, maybe even separating the ingredients for different meals into their own containers to make your life even easier later on. You wanna be able to open the fridge, take out the prepped ingredients, and throw it in the frying pan, or throw it in the oven, or throw it at your dog, or throw it at your other dog, or throw it at your work computer, or throw it at yourself. You will thank yourself later on for doing this. Prepping as soon as you get home is also very important if you're buying whole fresh ingredients. If I'm buying a huge stock of kale, just throwing it into the fridge is gonna make it wilt and be really Really soft and gross within a couple of days. But if I prep the kale, wash it, cut it, and put it in an airtight container, that can stay fresh for over a week. I also find that I reach more for it because it's already prepped and my lazy ass doesn't have to do anything. In addition to prepping your produce and such, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is cook in bulk. This includes things like your rice, your lentils, maybe even some pasta. These are typically important bases to your meals and they take a little bit longer to cook. So by cooking a large amount in the beginning of the week and storing them in the fridge for later, you're saving 20 to 30 minutes at least on your cook time for each meal. 30 minutes that you could be spending, uh, I don't know, what do like, people do these days? Of course, if you prefer fresh rice, quinoa, and lentils every day, you can skip this step. But I find that these things keep very well in the fridge and are easily added to things like soups, stir fries, and that's really all I know how to make. This next step is only for the people that are serious about being one of the laziest people that walk along this earth. And I mean serious. And still being able to brag to all of your friends about how much healthier you are than all of them. Then what you need is a crock pot. My mom bought me my crock pot for Christmas a couple years ago. And I just wanna say that you really know you've 
reached adulthood when you get a crock pot for Christmas and you are fucking excited about that. <laughs> this is literally the only piece of equipment you need. Seriously, the only thing that you need, like ever in your whole life. It is the lazy man's essential tool because you literally need to do nothing. Just throw everything in the pot and turn it on. You can even go to work in the morning, come back and BAM! Dinner is made. With that, I'm gonna show you how to make my all time favorite crock pot recipe. And that is sweet potato chili. This recipe is both vegan and gluten free and you can make it however you want. The number one thing I love about this recipe is that it's so adaptable and you can use anything you have in your cabinets or in your fridge to substitute. This recipe has always been a hit with my family and friends and I actually think I, there's never been a person that I've made it for and they said they didn't love it. For this recipe, you'll need two medium sweet potatoes peeled and cut into cubes, half of a yellow onion diced, three cans of your choice of beans, I'm using black beans, pinto beans, and chickpeas, one 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes, one six ounce can of tomato paste, one cup of water, two tablespoons of cumin, one tablespoon chili powder, one teaspoon minced garlic, one teaspoon cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon ground cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. Put everything in the crock pot, cover, and cook on low for five to six hours. And that's it. Now that I have given you all the tools to live your healthiest and laziest life, go out there, prosper, and binge watch three hours of The Crown. See you next week. Bye.